I'm Steve Bierman. Governor Inslee just wrapping up his latest news conference showing evidence in it that we have started to flatten the curve of the coronavirus in Washington state in large part, he says, because of the social distancing, the directive to stay at home. But it's also he warned only in King, Pearson, and Homish County. It's different in the rest of the state. So again, he mentioned many issues we still got getting medical equipment and a false sense of accomplishment. How much damage could be done if we start to let up? So he announced $1.8 million in grants to rural uh, counties and communities. Uh, he announced that they are allowing retail stores, Washington State, to still sell goods online, but emphasize they have to be uh, mailed or delivered. They don't want people waiting around storefronts. He talked about waiving late penalties for taxes for state liquor and cannabis businesses. And then he mentioned this, an 843% an increase in new unemployment claims in just the last week, comparing the number 6,000 two weeks ago to 133,000 claims this week in Washington and how the state is bringing in hundreds of staff to meet the needs. We cannot let up on this virus, even if we get to a point where there's continuation of reducing the rate of increase. And we eventually want to see these numbers start to drop down on a weekly basis. But the fact is we have to we have to hammer this until we can be assured that it will not spring back up. So he re emphasized once again we have not turned the corner in any way, but he says in closing schools, restaurants, theaters, prohibiting all these gatherings, it has slowed the rate of increase in Puget Sound. He also mentioned he spoke to President Trump today in a White House call with governors and that he pushed the president to adopt nationally some of the things that we've done here in Washington state. Taking a look at the stocks right now, third straight day of big gains in terms of some local companies of note. Boeing is up 13 percent again today. That's about the same rate of the last two. Alaska Airlines is up 9 percent. It's not all great news nationally. Three million Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. That shatters the previous record set back in 1982. So the $2 trillion relief package expected to alleviate some major pressures, especially for people who are out of work or businesses who've had to temporarily close. But some people say $2 trillion is actually not enough. NBC's Tom Costello reports. This morning, the largest economic rescue package in U.S. history is one step closer to delivering a desperately needed financial injection to both American workers and businesses devastated by the coronavirus crisis. On this vote, the A's are 96. The nays are zero. The Senate unanimously passing its version of the bill overnight. I'm proud to announce tonight not a single senator voted against this $2 trillion rescue bill. The measure includes forgivable loans for small businesses that would allow them to maintain workforces and cover other expenses like rent and utilities. $500 billion has been earmarked to help big businesses that have been crippled, like the airline industry. We need to get this money into the American economy and American workers. Ordinary Americans also getting help. Direct cash payments will be made to individuals making less than $99,000 a year and couples earning less than $198,000. So how quickly would you see the money in your account? Well, the House has to pass this bill. Then it goes to the president for his signature. It will probably take a few weeks. If you have direct deposit, the IRS will put the money directly into your bank account if they have that information on file. If not, it could take a few weeks or even months to receive a check. I'm Tom Costello in Washington. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Tom. Businesses that are considered non-essential are now closed in Washington state for at least two weeks. But grocery stores, gas stations are among those that can stay open. So some places are wondering if they'll open again. Others have hired privacy, uh, private security to make sure that nothing bad happens while they're shut down. I believe they're not going to come with no report. If nobody report about the accident, nobody's going to come. Yesterday, Washington State launched a new online form that clarifies what counts as an essential business and gives owners a way to ask the state to be included if they're not. For a link to that form, text the word essential to us here at King 5, 206 448 4545. We'll send you a direct link. A big announcement from Seattle based Alaska Airlines today that it will reduce its flight schedule by 70% in response to the pandemic. Several other airlines have made major cuts because people just aren't traveling. Now, Alaska stock is actually up 9% today, and we talked about the trend of flight reduction with Scott Hamilton, who studies airlines and aerospace. And if you're flying that across the country with only 10 passengers uh, who are paying a reduced fare anyway, 
uh, you're losing about twenty thousand uh, dollars on a flight, uh, roughly. Um, you, you, that's just not sustainable. Meantime, Boeing deciding to close its Everett factory temporarily. According to the Washington Post, that $2 trillion federal coronavirus bailout includes billions essentially earmarked for Boeing. Community Transit, which serves Snohomish County, says five of its employees have tested positive for coronavirus. And it says those people last worked between March 5th and 17th and that another eight employees are in self-quarantine while they re wait for their test results. The State Department of Transportation is scaling back service of Amtrak Cascades trains because hardly anyone's riding on it. So until further notice, we'll uh, just have two daily round trips between Seattle and Portland. And with the stay at home order now in place, you can still go outside. In fact, you should, but you won't be able to visit the six million acres of public lands in Washington for at least two weeks. Our Michael Crow has more from North Bend. Leave it to coronavirus to make public lands a lot less public. I've never been on a more dead trail than right now. I mean, usually with this close to Seattle, a trail is just packed. Isaiah Swanson and Aaron Persinger hiked Mount Si on Wednesday, glad for a little space. But the problem is this weekend, that was not the case. People packing onto popular hiking trails, wildlands no longer so socially distant. It's the last chance to get out before the uh, lockdown. By lockdown, they mean news yeah. from the Department of Natural Resources that it's closing all public lands Thursday to slow the spread of coronavirus. That includes trails for hiking and biking, public access to waterways, anything on the six million acres DNR manages. The problem is there is no ability to maintain a six foot rule on those trails and those recreation areas and they were packed and people were in very close quarters, and there were many people. State Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz says she knows people value their time outside, especially right now, but they felt this was the only option after such high traffic. I believe it's our responsibility to make sure we're taking every step and precaution to prevent the spread of this disease. And if people want to get outdoors, they can still take a walk in their neighborhood. DNR is not alone in this decision. State parks are closed across Washington, along with state-managed wildlife areas and water access areas. Federal sites are changing, too. Mount Rainier National Park closed all roads to vehicle access. Public lands closed to the public for now. Yeah, it is funny to think of it that way, like this one kind of bit of salvation that you have to get out of the city and go enjoy yourself. We can't even have that anymore. But Isaiah and Aaron are willing to sacrifice some time outside so they can enjoy it after the virus. Yeah, it, it's terrible. And like, you know, I'd rather be out doing this every day, but, you know, it is it's life. Sure. There'll always be more, you know, time later on. Mm -hmm. The DNR says they expect these closures to last through at least April 8th. At Mount Si, I'm Michael Kraut, King 5 News. Washington Senator Patty Murray is securing more than $3 billion for emergency child care. This is a plan to help essential workers continue to work and serve the community and have someplace for their kids to go. She says this is a, quote, desperate need as they try to keep people in our state safe. The mayor of Muckleteo, Jennifer Gregerson, is reminding parents to safely store their guns, especially while children are home from school. She says responsible gun owners should always lock away their firearms unloaded and separate from ammunition. Recent data suggests secure storage of guns reduces the rate of unintentional deaths and injuries. Mayor of Seattle Jenny Durkin raising this flag atop the Space Needle today, which is obviously closed to the public as every public place is. It says we got this Seattle. She has a lot on her plate. She's trying to give everybody a little bit of uh, common theme to keep attacking coronavirus. And of course, count on King 5 and King5.com to bring you the latest on the outbreak and the impact on our community financially, health-wise, you name it, whether we're on the air or not. You can get all of the latest information on King5.com. If it's easier for you, you can text the word virus to us for a direct link.